And, and this is this is the real kind of question. If we believe, look at that, it's right on the level there. I, I really like where silver is. We are in a buy zone. I think we do probably pop higher. Uh, and I think may, maybe the dollar takes a bit of a rest next week, you know, this, which is why, you know, I'm focused on copper for my for my near term. Uh, but the, the, the dollar over the next month, I suspect, over October, I suspect will just um, b- bobble around, but be slightly higher. Um, but over the next week, I wonder whether we might get a bit of a, of a pause in the uh, in the, the upside with the dollar. And we could uh, actually get a, a bit of a bounce in the, in the likes of silver. But uh, I really like where it is. It is in a buy zone. We do have this hammer here. And it's a clean one as well. So it's a beautiful bar, that is. Um, because with a hammer, you want it to be hammering out a low where there's nothing else around it and there's no other price action in the in the uh, where the tail is of this so it's hammered out a low it looks like it's it's done the classic move that hammers do which is hammer out where the lowest price point is and then bounced up and it doesn't have price action to the left of it directly to the left of it and it doesn't have price action directly to the right of it so so far this looks pretty clean and it looks technically speaking like we could get a bounce here and as i say the big question is are you trading a bounce, uh, a dead cat bounce, or are you trading a, a potential continuation of the longer term trend? Uh, I suspect we could be uh, in dead cat bounce territory. So I would be looking at silver for uh, for a little bit of upside, but probably only to around about uh, 2480 before uh, it could start potentially turning around again. Now, it, it doesn't mean that I don't think it's uh, it's a really good price down here longer term, because, but what I'd like to see on the price action is it come back again, test it and then hold, and then I'd be interested in taking the, in silver long and holding onto it for a while. But my first position and my first um, uh, opinion on silver would be, look for a bounce to the upside, but don't expect it to go too much higher than uh, around about the $25 mark. Let's hear from PH. PH, what do you got on silver? Um, mate, it's not a chart I look at a lot, but I've got to say, you know, what, what goes up must come down. And there's a similarity there between silver and gold, right? Both of them hung around, consolidated for ages, formed a bit of a pennant, and we were all kind of flipping a coin to, to, to decide whether they were going to break to the upside and break to the downside. I think the general bias was to the downside. Um, and, and, and that's what happened really on both of them. So I'm seeing a lot of correlations there between, you know, um, XAU and XAG. Um, and I, I like, Ash, I do like that. Um, I, I do like that, what, what I call it a low test bar sitting on the, you know, sitting on the, uh, the trend line there. Um, I, I hate to go short on these commodities because especially with gold, I've just got a rule. I, I just don't short gold. I'll, I'll short the Aussie dollar, right? Which, which you know, has, has been also kind of going out in sympathy with, with, with uh, gold. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, you know, like long, longer term, I think it's a good, you know, maybe a good time to look for, for accumulation opportunities, um, but not, not something that I would trade. Cheers, PH. Alexis, got anything for us on silver? Uh, well, I don't really look at silver as well, but the interesting thing about silver, I think that uh, I think there was an article um, that in recent years, the the cost of producing silver has actually increased. And this is some, uh, let me just quickly share this uh, chart so that you guys can actually uh, gauge for yourself. Uh, there the is actually cost, I call it right, the marginal cost of silver, the cost of production, right? Yeah, correct. And also, uh, there's this uh, in in the UK. Apparently, there's this uh, institute that researches on silver. So that that had some uh, interesting um, results, which I'm just going to flash, and then you guys can decide. So this is from the Silver Institute. Uh, you know, it's it's a research thingy, and you can see silver supply and demand. So the cool thing mm-hmm. is, they actually show you uh, what has happened with the silver and demand. So over here, 2020 FF is forecast. And in 2019 and 2020, you can see that uh, supply and of course, demand has kind of dropped. I think um, it definitely has to do with, uh, you know, um, industrials and, you know, the the factories that are not using as much silver as before. So because silver is a commodity and commodity prices and are really based on the the powers of supply and demand. So uh, I'm not a big fan of silver because I think it's, it's not as good as gold and it's a little bit unpredictable personally because I don't quite 
quite traded. But uh, I think if we look purely at the technicals, um, I'm a little bit concerned. It's at the level where the cost of silver, uh, this was uh, 20, sorry, wrong article. This was in 2017. So over here, you know, uh, there was a estimate of the cost of silver. Uh, you know, so it the price now it's really really around the cost of silver production, so it 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 it, it then comes with a question mark as is this uh, sustainable and will it really mirror the the price of gold? So while I don't trade it, I do kind of read up a little bit, but um, you know, I I leave you guys to to decipher for itself. But personally, I prefer to buy gold. I'm a, a little bit on the Paul Hutton team of uh, waiting for gold at a good price and buying it, other than silver. Yep, that's all I have. Well, the person in our organisation that likes to buy gold the most is Ainsley. Ainsley, yeah. what about you on silver? What's your thought on that silver chart? Ha. Huh. Um, again, like Alexis, I prefer gold over silver. Always look better with gold than silver. Well, we've got a lot of gold. Now, um, Paul, can you just grab that screen again and go back to that chart? Because one of the things, oh, Ash's chart, one of the yep. things that I saw on that is, yeah, we do have a hammer. We have... We're looking for a, for a rally or for a long position. What we'd be looking for is that hammer to be the hammer being the penul penultimate bar. And then the ultimate bar on Friday was did not close above the high of that penultimate bar. So for a ring low to form a... a um, a trade setup for a, a, a trade long, you'd want that last bar to close above the high of that hammer. So for me, despite the uptrend and uh, the levels being bounced from which it was bouncing, it doesn't give me enough to even look at that for a long. Now, for silver, it is highly correlated to gold. Gold did not form any kind of hammer. It, it really lost its spark on the week of uh, Thursday and Friday. It didn't do anything it was meant to do on Thursday and Friday. And um, for silver, yeah, I think with what's coming up in the week ahead, we just need to be really, really careful. So, yeah, that's, that's me on silver. I'm not a big, big goer of silver because I tend to trade something that's more heavily traded with more volatility, uh, with, with more volume. Something, and, I, and I do that with all my trading, go with the the higher volumes. Yeah, look, I'm, you know, um, I, I get all that stuff and I agree with it. There's some great data, some good analysis from all of you guys. Um, I tend to, um, I'm going to go here that uh, for mine, I've got uh, this uh, range was up here, the break of the range is pulled down. I've now got a, a test bar. I've uh, got a, coming up a few recent lows. I'm prepared to look for a leg up here, but I, I'm with Ash. And what, I'm, what I really want to do is see where it really ends out. And, you know, a retest of the uh, of this level here looks a bit looks a bit far away from mine, but if she wants to pull up and put in a lower high and then reverse, I'd be pretty interested, and I'd be looking for what happens around here. When we get to this trend line and this area of support again, if we break it, I think we're gone to the races, and uh, if we uh, get a bounce here, then we'll look to put in a, uh, a higher high and a higher low, and then have another crack at it uh, further up. So uh, stuff to watch. Um, I had some different views from the team on that. So a little bit on the fly now. Uh, I am um, talking to people in YouTube. Hey, thanks for the likes on YouTube, guys. That was brilliant. Now it is um, it is time for Shukri. We have no Lloyd and no Ping Ni today, so no currency strength indicator and uh, no oil today. But we're going to uh, Shukri, and uh, from uh, Shukri we'll be going to Ainsley to do gold, and from Ainsley and gold we're doing. Um, Perhaps one more around the team on a different chart. I think we might have a look at Euros and get the team to do that if everybody's still around. And uh, then we'll go to Jeff to have a look at his four charts, hopefully out of the show about uh, half an hour from now. Shukri, big day yesterday, mate. Keep you nice and busy. Yes, it is definitely a big day. And uh, also... Let me unmute. 